answered my phone on this time though because um, I'm way too nervous about it. Right, so um, we called, uh, I, I called as board chair, I called an emergency meeting today for, um, for this uh, Butte fire. And uh, because, um, because I think that, um, I thought that it was uh, a, a definite emergency by the, oh, here, here we go. Um, by the looks of things. So um, there's a couple of things that, that so we're calling it to order at uh, 1 30. And oh, by the way, <laughs> we're going to just follow the process of our regular meeting to begin with. I kind of want to jump right to the stuff, you know, but uh, so we, can we stand for the pledge, please? Mr. Garamendi, can you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, regular process is, is uh, announcements from the board. Uh, there's only three of us today, so we do have a quorum. Um, Supervisor Kearney uh, had to go uh, evacuate his sister or help uh, in, in uh, Pioneer. And we haven't been able to get a hold of Supervisor Wright still. So there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the communications just came up not, maybe an hour, two, two hours ago maybe. Uh, cell phones just came up and then also uh, up where he lives. Uh, it's kind of in the thick of things and, and there's no power. And, um, you know, there's quite a, so the communications is probably pretty rough up there. So uh, we're gonna go into public comments. And, uh, I'll start. and I, I, I was thinking Kathy would probably start. <laughs> Do I have five minutes? Um, yes. Hi, Kathy Topo, Common Ground Senior Services. Um, thank you for calling this today. Um, I really want to bring your attention to our older adults. Um, in the affected area, we have 48 to 50 clients. Um, we were able to service all today except for four. I don't know what's going to happen as this thing grows. Um, but we also have older adults in shelters. And um, I know of three in the San Andreas shelter. We need to get them out. We need to get them into a hotel, somewhere that they can be comfortable, especially as the night grows on, because of the fact that as more people come into these places, number one, um, it's gonna be very confusing for them. Number two, they can't sleep on those cots. I don't even know if I could sit on one of those cots, let alone sleep on it. And so if I could, um, ask you guys to maybe look at giving me some funding so that we can get those people out of there. I've um, also applied at three other places to try and get some funding. So um, I did this at the Rim Fire. Um, we relocated 24 people and it cost us about eight grand. So I don't think it's gonna take a lot. Um, I'm gonna work with some of the hotels to see number one if they could give us some group rates um, and stuff like that. So please um, take that into consideration today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. All right, so um, as board chair, um, I had to call this emergency meeting to recommend the board uh, declare a state of emergency due to the Butte fire. Um, and, the, and in order to, to do this, we have to have certain findings. And the, um, the the board uh, needs to make uh, specific findings on, on record, and they are, um, of course, the first one, because uh, the board chair called the emergency meeting. But the second one is the board of supervisor finds uh, the Bo uh, Butte fire qualifies as an emergency per government code 54956.5A, as it is an event that severely impairs public health and safety. And we, um, we have to approve that as a board. So could I have a motion on that, please? I so move that this does present a danger to the residents of our county in the condition of a state of emergency. 
I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so do we have uh, public comments on that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, the next finding is the Board of Supervisors, we the Board of Supervisors, further finds that the Butte Fire disrupts or threatens to disrupt public facilities per Government Code 54956.5B and therefore an emergency meeting on one hour public notice is appropriate under the Brown Act. Um, so can I have a motion on that one please? So moved. Okay. Second. So I have a motion by Supervisor Ponte, a second by Supervisor Oliver. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carbon, carbon. Okay, so public comments on that one. Kind of after the fact, but uh, so these these are the, the findings that we needed to do to make this meeting uh, legal, according to the Brown Act, basically. Okay, so uh, we also have um, an action item, and uh, so there's a resolution that uh, that we want to adopt. And the resolution, uh, this resolution has to be adopted by roll, roll call. And this resolution um, is a declaration of a local state of emergency in Calaveras County due to the September 2015 Butte land, wild land fire. Um, this will allow us to forward this to the state office of emergency services and um, they will then forward it on to um, allow us to get state and federal aid. Um, and, and obviously the state of emergency does um, occur because of the peril to life and property. It exists. It continues to threaten property. If I may, um, I attended the MAC meeting that was held at 9 o'clock this morning. And obviously things have changed since then, but we don't have official confirmation on anything beyond what we heard at the MAC meeting this morning. And basically it's what you can find on um, CAL FIRE's website, incident reports. Um, 4,000 acres had burned at that point. <laughs> um, they had hoped that it was about 20% contained, though I understand they're having some issues with it. Um, it crossed the river um, in the Boston Neo uh, subdivision area um, that was mandatory evacuated. We've heard that six structures have been lost. Um, it continued to burn west towards Moak Hill to Easy Bird Lane, and there were areas of Moak Hill that were under mandatory evacuation. Um, we understand that from Boston Neo to Ponderosa also is mandatory evacuation that as of 10 o'clock this morning, the fire was upgraded from a type three to a type one by Cal Fire, which enables to bring in um, additional equipment and air support. Um, we have developed a hotline that people can call for information regarding um, the fire. It's, it provides the information on shelters, the Cal Fire public number that um, uh, can give them updated information regarding um, the fire. Um, obviously, you can, if you have power, you can um, go on uh, the website and uh, get the information as well. Um, if you don't know, about 12,100 residents are without power and it's unknown when that power will be restored. Um, the hotline number here that we've established at the county is 754-6561. Again, it's a recording that will provide you shelter information information regarding um, if you have animals, livestock, and what, where to take those. Um, it uh, provides the public call center number for CAL FIRE um, where you can get additional information. Okay. Anything else, Shirley? Yeah, not at the moment. All right. Um, I will continue. I will uh, keep the board informed as we know we have another MAC meeting at 3 o'clock this afternoon and hopefully we'll have some further updates um, on that um, the happening. I've heard some additional information but I have not been able to confirm it as of yet. Shirley, can you, can you for those who may not know, um, 
tell us what MAC is and how the how our Office of Emergency Services <coughs> participates? I, I'm sorry. Um, being in county government for a while, and you you whip out the acronyms and don't think about it too much. <laughs> it's multi-agency um, coordination committee. Um, it, it's a group of where the Office of Emergency Services brings together all the um, agencies that are tied in or have information or support in ongoing emergency incidents such as wildland fire. It can include the administrative office, course, of course the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, um, if the city's involved, Angels Camp PD, it's uh, police department, um, it's uh, P um, CCWD was there, PG&E, it could be the schools, it's Red Cross, it's the CERT, members of the CERT teams, which are, we were just honored this past Tuesday for their um, responses. Um, it, it, it's basically, um, it's Health and Human Services, it's Public Works, it's everybody that has something to do or provides some support for a wildland fire incident or a flooding incident. Emergency okay. incident. In any, any, any type of major emergency <coughs> for the county. So these meetings are held kind of as needed and here at the government center? They are. They're held in the sheriff's um, emergency operations uh, situation room, if you would, uh, mm -hmm. command center. Um, and they are usually initially instituted by the sheriff's office and then they're called and set up. Um, they're usually held during the incident, uh, while the incident is ongoing and they can be held um, as often as needed, um, usually at a minimum two to three times in a day. Okay. Um, from past experience, I was with the City of Angels when the um, Darby fire took place and one of the things that was most helpful as being a city council member was after those particular MAC meetings, um, information went out to the city council in this case, if that would be possible for board members to be updated via the, the MAC meeting. Um, I know that there's Twitter and Facebook and all sorts of websites out there, but you know, information varies. And I think as a public official to kind of hear the information from MAC, would be most helpful um, in perhaps how we can help as individuals and as a board to to the incident. And, and that is my intent, um, Supervisor Ponte. Um, I was one of the people with our power last night, so I really didn't have a way of communicating other than yeah. a phone call. And I had contacted the sheriff's office, and they had asked me if I needed to come in because they were were they going to form um, have the first MAC meeting. I was assured that if um, it got to that point, they would call me. When I got into work this morning, um, again, I was limited with communications. Yeah. Um, I, we attended the MAC meeting, came back, and I, I tried contacting the supervisors to yes. um, arrange this meeting. But my intent is after the 3 o'clock meeting that we will send out an email to the board members so to update them on the situation and keep them apprised as we move through the incident. And I believe uh, Chair Edson will be attending the 3 o'clock MAC meeting yeah. as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you for bringing that up, Supervisor Ponte, because um, I got to tell you that the call started coming in last night um, right around 6 o'clock. And um, I didn't have any information to give out uh, other than what I was seeing on Facebook. Uh, and so, uh, I feel that um, uh, as the leaders of the county, we should probably be included in some of this stuff. And uh, so I'm a little bit uh, surprised that, that we weren't. And, uh, and then, of course, Shirley, um, she was uh, in an area where she wasn't getting any calls because so that kind of that kind of put a kibosh to, to a couple of things as well. It's, it's nobody's fault, but mm -hmm. that's so. Um, I would like to see uh, us contacted and, and, and have the choice to show up at these MAC meetings and, and attend because uh, our constituents call us and uh, we're responsible for giving them uh, the information that we can give them, accurate information. Or uh, we're also responsible for information that we shouldn't be passing around if, if that's the case. And um, uh, so um, how can we do that if we aren't involved. Right. 
Well, and I think it goes to show, too, how quickly something small can turn to large to grand. And, you know, we've seen just less than 24 hours this thing has taken, you know, it's a, a vicious turn, you might say. So, you know, I can understand initially, you know, you just don't know if it's going to grow big or not. So I appreciate the fact that MAC is on board because I think that's a very helpful way for all the various agencies to, to coordinate and communicate. And then, you know, they and they have respective boards to go back to. So I thank you just for kind of keeping us in that loop as these meetings are held and information is being disseminated. Because I find, you know, in this day and age of social media, there's lots of misinformation out there as well. And I don't want to be, you know, dependent upon that as my source of information to share with people that are calling, be able to direct them to, i.e., this website or a phone number or whatever is appropriate. And, uh, and, and um, speaking, I don't want to speak for the sheriff's office, but when I mm -hmm. spoke to Lieutenant Harmony last night about um, 7.30, quarter of 8, I believe it was, um, his, the expectation was that normally at night the fire lies down and that there wouldn't be any immediate need or any huge growth. Unfortunately, given the conditions that we're in and the heat, um, it did not lie down and it, it grew quite significantly over the mm -hmm. night. Um, I was unfortunately not aware of that until I actually arrived this morning. <laughs> my cell phone was dead last night. My power was out. So um, I was relying on the information I had gotten from the sheriff's office. But yes, I agree. It's, it's imperative that we keep the board informed mm -hmm. and we will make sure that continues to occur. If I'm unable to do it, I'll make sure it can be done through someone else. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have an issue that, that we probably need to uh, take a good look at. Um, in District 3, uh, we have uh, part-time owners that live outside the area and may not have access to our local news media. Uh, in fact, just prior to the meeting, I had received an email from one of our folks uh, that have a residence in Arnold uh, indicating that is there any way to get a cell phone on our reverse 911. I don't think that's has that capability yet, but uh, just for the folks out there that if we could get that information, confirmed information, uh, to our district supervisors like we're suggesting, I think we can provide confirmed information for the folks that own property that pay taxes in this county that aren't able to come up here. Now, please keep in mind, if we have an evacuation that turns suddenly, these folks could be two to four to seven hours away before they can even get here. So it's important that we keep these folks in the loop also. Maybe we could look at some way to do that through email. I'd be willing to do it through my county email uh, to those residents until we find a better way. But it's very important that we take care of all the residents of this county. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the board or staff? No? Okay. How about the uh, public? You guys want to have any comments? I, I would like to mention one other thing. Thank you to the Auditor Controller. She has set up a separate fund to allow us and has notified the um, different departments of that fund so that we are able to tra uh, track all costs associated with the fire through that fund. So when it comes to claiming at the end of this, um, hopefully it will make it easier um, because we will have all those costs in one fund. Yes. Uh, you know, Luckily, uh, or not so luckily, uh, Tuolumne County has gone through this, so they were able to give us some very good information on, on how we should do this. And, and we had a meeting several months ago uh, that Tuolumne County, Napa County, and also San Francisco, uh, who have all unfortunately gone through some pretty uh, trying times over the last couple of years, were able to share some experiences and some good uh, lessons to learn for us so we did uh, set that up first thing this morning we've notified all of the department heads their associated staff the important part is that if we do have to make a claim to fema as i said the other day uh, we're looking at a significant delay and probably return funding but fema will only reimburse us if we have some very clear uh, documentation mm -hmm. um, they will go through it with a fine tooth comb. And so it's going to be um, extremely important that departments are properly documenting every minute that they're spending on this incident. 
every, uh, you know, everything that they buy, every piece of equipment that they rent, every uh, service that they do with a contractor. So we're going to be working with the administrative office on that. Um, in, in addition to that, I, I felt it was important to keep a separate um, account for that so that you as the Board of Supervisors, probably when we come back on the 22nd, we might actually start seeing what some of those costs are. It will be my recommendation at that time that we take some contingency funds, um, go ahead and build a budget for that emergency incident account, um, and then we'll just have to continue to keep the board apprised. Okay. So would that include uh, some of the things like Kathy was talking about? Um, that would be at the, at the decision of the CAO, but okay. yes. Actually, the decision of the board, right? Well, it's the decision of the board, but you know, unfortunately, with emergencies, emergencies happen, and then we come back and ask for uh, forgiveness later. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, according to our purchasing code, um, under emergency pur purchases, that's exactly correct. We go ahead and make the purchases, and then if they exceed spending authority, then we come back to the board and ask for forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. permission, pay right. it after the fact. All right, so. Okay. Chair Edson, I did want to also put it on the record. I know um, Supervisor Oliveira had asked about notification under emergency situations, and um, I don't know if you're aware of it. Um, at least I'm not, I, I don't know all of the ins and outs of it, but I do receive notifications that anybody can sign up for through um, nixel.com, and um, it's n i x l e.com. And it's, um, you get email alerts from the sheriff's office um, for any advisory, um, any advisory emails of, of any incident that's going on in the county that um, the sheriff's office submits any kind of notification of. So there is that option for people that live outside of the county to get those notifications. Yeah, and that's a very good system. Uh, I, I'm actually a member of Nixle. I get those informational uh, emails and that, that is one way to do it. And, and Probably one of the best ways to do it. Uh, Does it include uh, Cal Fire? Uh, I think this is originated. Nixle is originated through law enforcement agencies. Okay. Uh, Cal Fire must. Uh, I know they have their website, but as you can tell, some of that information is delayed, um, and they're not going to put anything out that's not confirmed. Once again, Supervisor Ponte mentioned that Facebook and other social media has a tendency to embellish or not accurately report exactly what the situation is. That's why the uh, MAC meetings are so very important that, that information get out as soon as we possibly can after it's been confirmed by the involved agencies. But Nixel is one way to do it. Um, once again, uh, once we obtain that confirmed information, I think it's our job as supervisors to get that information out to the involved public as soon as we possibly can. All right. Okay, any other comments? All right, we'll go. Um, I make a motion to approve resolution. Well, we have to read it first. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay, Debbie. You don't have to read it. I don't? Mm -mm. I don't have to read it? Mm -mm. No, we don't have to read it. It's already been published. It's from published. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, you can if you'd like to. I think so. Folks out there might want to hear it. Um, so the uh, th declaration of a local state of emergency in Calaveras County due to the September two, uh, 2015 Butte Wildland Fire. It's a resolution number uh, 1694. So whereas on September 10th, 2015, the County of Calaveras found that due to the Butte Fire, a condition of extreme peril to life and property does currently exist in Calaveras County during the period beginning on September 9th, 2015. And whereas Section 2.72.060 uh, of the Calaveras County. All right. I think I got to run, though. <laughs> empowers the Board of Supervisors to proclaim the existence uh, or threatened existence of local emergency when said county is affected or likely to be affected by a, a public calamity. And whereas, pursuant to Section 2.72.010. ET. Uh, what is that? That's sake. 
Let's at the seat. Section. Of the Calaveras County Code, the Dir Director of Emergency Services has proclaimed a local state of emergency throughout Calaveras County. And whereas the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors shall be the Director of Emergency Services in Calaveras County. Well, that one is uh, really good for me to know. <laughs> I just felt. <laughs> And, <laughs> and whereas the Calvary's County Director of Emergency Services does believe that uh, these conditions remain uh, and the Board of Supervisors does desire to ratify the proclamation of uh, the existence of a local emergency. Therefore, be resolved that the Calvary's County Board of Supervisors does hereby ratify the September 10, 2015 declaration of uh, a local emergency in Calaveras County as a result of the September 9th, 2015 wildland fire that it has caused damage to public and private property and be it further resolved uh, that the County of Calaveras also requests the state of California to waive regulations that may hinder response and recovery efforts to make available recovery assistance under the California Disaster Act and to ex ex expedite access to federal resources and any other appropriate federal disaster relief programs and be it further uh, declared and ordered that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the governor of California with the request that he proclaim the county of Calaveras be in the state of emergency and be it further uh, ordered that a copy of the resolution is forwarded to the state director of office of emergency services and so uh, now I'd like to motion I'll, on I'll make a motion to approve okay well, I'll second. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a second. Sorry. Debbie already made the motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> second. I'll second then. All right. So we have a motion by Supervisor Ponty, second by Supervisor Wright. Uh, on a motion of Supervisor, seconded by Supervisor Wright, the uh, foregoing resolution is may be passed here. Uh, but I'm going to take a roll call on the vote. Do I have a uh, public comment on this first? Okay. So can I have? A roll call. Aye. Okay. Supervisor Pony. Aye. Supervisor Oliveira. Aye. Supervisor Wright. Aye. And I'm an aye. So on a motion by uh, Supervisor Ponty, a second by Supervisor Wright, the foregoing resolution was duly passed and adopted by the Board of Supervisors of the County of Calaveras, State of California, this 10th day of September 2015. By the following vote. Four with one absent. And that is that. So, that's about all we have right now. So we will try to update everybody um, as we get information. Uh, I will attend the MAC meeting today. I will attend also. Okay, my, uh, Oliver will attend. Uh, Debbie? I will not attend. I don't want to violate the Brown Act. <laughs> you can sit on, we can sit like on opposite sides of the room. No, there. that's okay. I don't even um, want to go there. <laughs> So I want to thank you for uh, attending uh, in such a short notice and um, maybe uh, can Kathy come and talk to you? Okay. So the meeting, meeting adjourned. Office.